we are here with the um, part of the cast mm -hmm. of the amazing movie One and Two. Um, I there's a an in, there's a, a review of it on the site now. You can click the link below. So I'm not gonna like do like a super in depth mm -hmm. uh, analysis of the movie here, but I did want to talk to you guys and thank you so much. Thank you, Timo Chalamet, Elizabeth Reeser. Um, Amazing performances in the movie. Thank you. Um, now, you've both done other movies mm -hmm. that have fantastical elements to them, mm -hmm. um, be they sci-fi or fantasy or, you know, vampires. Um, what would you say is, like, the biggest difference between the, like, the world of the fantastical world that's in this movie and the, the world, uh, the, like, the fantastical sci-fi or fantasy worlds in the other movies that you guys have done. Hmm. Whoa, interesting. Um, Elizabeth, you have something to say? I'll let you go <laughs> well, first. Well, I was going to say, I think, it's, uh, I think it's a weird challenge for an actor to make that kind of stuff believable. Uh, it's weirdly harder than I imagined for when, when I was doing Twilight. And in this movie, what was very interesting about being in, in, in the world of one and two was that my character, she didn't have a sense of the supernatural because she was living she's living in a very isolated world in a way so it's everything is sort of supernatural <laughs> because there's no uh, I've never you know they don't have television they don't have running water we don't have uh, uh, electricity so it's this very you know you, you go deep into your imaginative life I think when you're deep in mm. the woods with no friends around and just each other and I, I I think that this story was really about family and so the, the supernatural elements are sort of just all part of the the day-to-day -day life of these people. I mean, it, it created it creates a, a, a big conflict within the family, but it, it didn't. I I didn't think about it in those terms. Right. And uh, <laughs> right. I mean. Uh, right. Ditto. Right. <laughs> right. That was my way of jumping into my um, <laughs> a little spiel here, even though I agree with everything you said. Oh, um, but I guess I haven't done. I guess you know, Interstellar was very sci-fi. Yeah. But I was, lucky in that uh not lucky but my but my part didn't take place in space so i never had to deal with like elizabeth said making that imaginative leap all my stuff was on earth just a lot of dust a, a lot of dust a exactly. lot of dust yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> so uh with this i was the uh, i am the sci-fi in the movie you know i, yeah, I have these right. supernatural abilities <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i am sci-fi but um, you, you have it on record <laughs> timo chalamet <laughs> is sci-fi sci that's all there is to it copyright in that yeah um but uh you know i was talking about this with grant earlier and this is kind of my experience shooting it and i didn't really know how to articulate it then but in my discussions with him here in austin what's most important about um about i think you know, at 19, if I can say this, about doing the sci-fi stuff is to ground it in realism. And I really, I really shouldn't say sci-fi for this because there are supernatural abilities, but it's in service to the story. It's not like the actors are like yeah. props to it. Um, it's almost like magical realism. It's yeah, like, right, exactly, exactly. It's like a sprinkling of... Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I think the biggest challenge there is you, you do want to play in a realistic setting. So when people see the you know supernatural aspects of it they go oh yeah that's part of the film whereas and i said this earlier but you know if the actors are doing some crazy thing like some whatever weird style and there's <laughs> teleporting it's going to be like not it's no one's going to buy into it you right know? yeah yeah that's true that was great no i think that was that was amazing yeah, I, um you know what there I mean. no well because we never officially call it sorry, teleporting Andrew, sorry it I isn't but it's interesting i mean no i, I that there 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 was no real word for it so that's why we, you you're calling it teleporting right, right, but, right. It, but, it, but there really was no word for what it was it right this this really special magical weird thing within this family it's like on the walking dead they never call them zombies and but it's like okay obviously they're zombies uh -huh. right uh -huh. yeah um, there, there are a lot of like, um, par I, I don't know, I thought that there seemed like a lot of parallels between uh, the, the two young protagonists in this movie and some of the protagonists in a lot of like popular YA dystopian novels right mm -hmm. now. Um, do you feel like, do you feel like the, the story sort of cut from the same cloth or do you think it's like just completely 100% different? Um... Well, I don't know, but like Andrew kind of answered this earlier, our director, where he said, um, I think these things are fundable, you know? Right. Um, I have no concept of what that's like. 
Um, but it is from the same model and it isn't. And by that I mean uh, if you want to see a complex young character, you don't see a lot of it, you're going to see them with enormous obstacles to overcome. And I think in a lot of these, that's what's so nice about the dystopian YA genre is that these young kids have huge obstacles to right. overcome. So in yeah. that sense, I'd say, yeah, similar. But when you see the movie, if you see the movie, you'll see there there's such space in some of the moments, just the way it's so beautifully shot. Uh, in 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 those moments, I think it differs from these YA dystopian novels mm. and some of them that are turned to film, was where the pace is really extreme. Yeah, it did. It did seem like it was more complex. Like the inner lives were more complex than some. Not all of the YA. There's some really great YA, but mm -hmm. it did seem like there was more, like, inner turmoil with a lot of the mm -hmm. all of the characters. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was really amazing. Was you know the idea that these kids had something about them that was different. And that and their their father do, doesn't accept it in them, and, mm -hmm. and doesn't want them to be different in this way. And I thought that was a really interesting metaphor for pretty much anyone growing up. Right. Really. Do you feel like the mother character was accepted the ma the I don't want to call it magic. What uh, the <laughs> the tell the Natural. thing that, that <laughs> happens? I do the because I think I think my character the the mother was was just loved them and accepted them for for who they are. Yeah. And she didn't really have boundaries. Funnily enough, she she was not conservative in this way. She didn't have boundaries in her mind of what was, you know, uh, not what was wrong and what was right in terms of it's just who they are. And mm -hmm. so she loves them, and whatever they are is whatever they are, and that it's something makes them even more special. And so she was very accepting, and and I think that was that's such an important thing to have one parent at least in your family, yeah. one person that loves you and accepts you for who you are. And I think so many kids don't have that and, or people in general, it's yeah. just, we're such a judgmental world. And so it was interesting to see these kids battling that, you know, that part of growing up and having to sort of separate from your parents and, you know, become who you are. Yeah. Now, and this is not a spoiler really, but your character is sick mm -hmm. in the movie. Do you think that her acceptance of the of their abilities is what possibly adds to her being as ill as she is? Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, some people really felt that their abilities, their magical, you know, abilities were what caused her to become ill. And yeah. That there was a link, and I think the children were, were worried about that. Certainly, the father, my husband, thinks that in the movie, but I don't think that I think that. Right. I think that they're completely unrelated. I don't know necessarily what as the, the character is. you're saying you don't feel like yeah, yeah. And, and and as m me personally I mean I think like the mystery of that illness is was very interesting to me I mean I never went to a doctor in that movie there are no doctors in our world right. so th this mystery this illness is a mystery it could have been any number of things and I had ideas of it what it was as, a, as the actor but I, I don't think that that they were killing me you know metaphorically. right Right. Literally. Um, I am, you know, I loved this movie. I'm also a huge um, sci-fi nerd. Um, <laughs> and and maybe it's just because of that, but this felt like an origin story to me. <laughs> it felt like a superhero or supervillain origin story, uh -huh. um, especially the way that it ends, which I'm not going to give away. <laughs> um, but, there's, but there's an ending that sort of just makes it feel like this is like the beginning of something. If you could see like a part two, like where, what would you, what would you want to see happen to these characters? What do you think would happen to these characters? The, just you and the Kiernan character, not giving anything else. Not away. giving anything yeah, away. Yeah. Oh man, I that's I. It's it'd be unfair to dream about because <laughs> uh, you know I'm I don't I'm not the writer and. Uh, and this this could be like a summer tent pole. The, yeah. I mean, this could be like you know the next Avengers. That would be insane. Um, <laughs> a few people have have mentioned that though to me that they felt like this could be the beginning, the, the origin story, like you said. Of it does feel like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some our Andrew, our director, retweeted something about a preview for the film at South by Southwest says feels like some lost origin indie for X Men characters. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you feel do do you have a sense of like where? Morally, your character would go after. Mm, um, it's so hard without giving anyway anything about the movie. So right, I'll tell you off camera. But um, <laughs> okay, all right, fair uh, enough. But, uh, but you but you do have like an idea. Uh yeah, I think you go in a 
you know, in a million directions, you know. Right. And, and then, like I said, it's really not, it would never, in that world, it's never up to me where it would go. Of so. course. It would be hard for you, for the kids. Yeah. Going forward. Yeah, well, yeah. their abilities would make it very difficult. Um, in their childhood, their, the isolated nature yeah. of their life. Yeah. Um, uh, is there, um, uh, is there anything, I mean, completely off topic from the movie, <laughs> is there stuff that you guys are looking forward to doing at South by Southwest that, uh... Well, I gotta get out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to the airport after this. Oh, no. So, unfortunately, I haven't been able to, um, oh. to do too much. Also, I feel like I'm four years too young to really, like, <laughs> uh, experience <laughs> it. But, um... Honestly, there's still barbecue. My favorite yeah. thing so far has been the, uh, the breakfast tacos. Breakfast mm. tacos are I, that awesome. That has blown my mind. Like should that pick one up on needs the to be brought one. to other cities. Breakfast tacos. And this question is for you. Uh -huh. So you are familiar with Spark Notes. Yes. Okay. Has Spark Notes ever saved your life? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, Miss LaSalle and <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> but yes, yeah, Spark Notes has come through many times. Is there any like specific yeah. like book that you feel like you had to like this was like the the one book that um, Spark Notes like yeah, no, swooped in and like I'm forgetting its name, which is terrible because when I remember it, everyone will be like, "How did you forget that?" But uh, uh, where they live like on the edge of a cliff, this family and uh, oh, man. and it's all about uh, <laughs> sexuality and this girl, oh. and the, the mom wants to mm. marry her her daughter off to a suitor that she doesn't want to be with, and, uh... Hmm. Oh, man. You need the spark notes for I need the spark, spark, I need you spark, need, need spark notes, notes for the spark notes <laughs> yeah. on this one. I should have read the damn book, and then I would remember. <laughs> 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 All right, well, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much for doing this. This is really awesome. And, uh, again, check out the review. It's one of our, it's our big pick for South by Southwest film for wow, spark notes. Wow, great, great. We thank loved you. it so much. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing it in a the theater soon. Yeah, fingers crossed. Awesome.